how to be a spy. Make sure that everyone knows who you are. If you are you, you can't be a spy because only James Bond is a spy. They assume I'm just a harmless furry. Be polite and request access from the head of personnel. The head of personnel was Lewis Anderson. He was also a lizard. This would be trickier than I had anticipated. I would have to use every skill at my disposal. Reassure him that you are not a spy, whilst being as unsuspicious as possible. Use your bluffing ability to ensure that any slip-ups are not noticed as being out of the ordinary. It was vital that I acquired Lewis Anderson's potato. As I watched his scaly fingers typing, I tried to envision how I could arrest it from his pockets. Suddenly, I thought why not try persuasion techniques? I slipped up a little in the conversation, however, Lewis clearly trusted me. That poor, blind fool! Unlike most of his kind, Lewis was a kind and fair lizard, and decided that he would give me the potato for absolutely free, which was very suspicious in and of itself. However, I decided that I would accept this gentle act of kindness and realized that he was my only friend. Acquire a fitting disguise. A spy always makes sure that he dresses in a way that will be inconspicuous, and who wouldn't trust a bride. Now we try innocently to acquire other things in the most nonchalant manner possible. Note that I already have Lewis's potato, which I subtly obtained earlier. I knew the one thing I needed from this gentle soul was his leg, preferably with the kneecap intact, so I kept my eye open for nearby gangsters that might want to take his caps away. The man would not give me his leg, but he gave me a vehicle instead, which wasn't quite as cool, but a spy takes what he can get break down because of the man's sheer kindness. Confess it all. He looked at me confused, but he had a face I knew I could trust. It turns out that this noble soul was a patriot all along, ready to betray everyone for the sheer hell of it. I confirmed to my conspiratorial comrade that I would be getting up to no good, and soon He gave me a box of equipment so I could save the world he didn't care about. Remembering my spy training, I crawled off into the darkness. I trusted a man in chemistry, but he did not believe me. I persuaded him that I was a harmless crazy person, so he wouldn't be suspicious. Little did he know I was executing my master craftsman mind control on him. Using the chaplain powers Lewis had bestowed upon me, I tried to bring him into God's flock. I used my flashing hat to hypnotize him and danced away into the darkness. Because there was no security, I used my divine connection with God to become God's security on the station to keep an eye on Johnny's sins, because sins are ungodly, and also to keep the chaplain away from him. He was most ungrateful.
I had ensured the impossible. As a secret agent of God, I had become the security that this gentle soul needed to keep I, the chaplain, away from him, so that by being with him, I, as security, could always ensure that I, as the chaplain, wouldn't bother him. I felt his mind break. I felt that the AI didn't trust me enough to open doors for me, so I went back to bother Jolly since. I found out, using my persuasion skills, that Johnny Sins was behaving sinfully and making potassium the fiend. I asked a few normal questions to persuade people I wasn't doing anything out of the ordinary. and I insisted Johnny Sins work so his partner could keep an eye on him. I entered stealth mode so I could stealthily sneak up on my prey, unaware of my presence like a baby sheep about to be eaten by caterpillars. I snuck up on my prey. I told the computer how stealthy I was, and it was amazed to silence. Look, look how stealthy I am. <laughs> Suddenly, he saw me and tried to drag me into a room of death. I summoned the spirit of Bushido and drew my katana, and then by the power of Greyskull I attacked. Suddenly, I was compelled to enter the strange blue room. And before I knew it, I was trapped. The AI, my friend, my only companion, had betrayed me. Knowing its camera resolution was the equivalent of 180p, and it was practically blind, I tried to persuade it that this was a toy sword. Knowing my friend Lewis wouldn't be fooled, I tried to impress him with the majesty of the blade forged in the time of Hojo. They didn't believe me when I pretended I was Uma Thurman, though the impression was totally on point. I threw the ball around whilst I awaited my inevitable punishment. I activated my stealth mode and snuck around on the floor like a worm. They would never see me now, and I would be able to escape and attack. And sadly, Lewis, my friend who had given me his son's only potato, had betrayed me. I felt scaly hands pick me up. I felt cold and numb. I was carried into darkness by a lizard I could no longer trust. There were a few brief flashes of meaning. Then all I knew was darkness. Time to die.